In light of the recent Jonah Hill controversy and in following a request from a viewer, I decided to make a short video on loving without attachment. As recognized, Hill is engaging in a sort of therapy speak surrounding boundaries. This appears to come from a place of possessiveness. Why does possessiveness yeah. occur? I remember watching I, I remember watching that video, bro. He let he let all out. He let all out. And to me, uh, I, I do understand uh, where he was coming from, but it kind of seemed like a little narcissist. I don't know why. If y'all don't see the tweet, you can look it Eric up. From notes a sort of love. Just start the video back and you can look it up. Love Twitter. as teamwork, where everybody adjusts his behavior to the expressed needs of the other person in the pursuit of common aims. Modeled after the sort of groups you might that's, encounter that's in the, the keyword, space, oh, there isn't anything. That's, that's the keyword right there. Common aims apparently wrong in centering collaboration as the essence of a relationship but this is a naive concept as it fails to account for why we end up in relationships to begin with the neurotic lover from notes is usually a man who wants to be loved while never having to actually love this sort of childlike state encourages grandiose and romantic visions of their partner they may feel so good about their partner that at first they will display a great deal of charm and affection yeah but there is a significant failure in seeing their partner as a human being with their own agency. When they realize that their partner cannot live up to their fantasy, yeah. their idea of gratification, the man may feel deeply hurt and pin his pain on the idea that his partner is selfish and does not love him. Yeah, that, that, that's a thing. So that's one thing, right? Um, so we tend to you know, fall in love with people and not actually like loving them from for who they are at the moment we uh, know them, you know, or we get to meet them or meet them, whatever. Uh, we tend to love people thinking of who they could be in the future. Okay. We believe that they can actually love us some, some, in some way in the future, not actually like looking at how they love us right now. And, that just that just setting yourself up for failure from like from the get-go that's you are making a huge mistake that happened to me one time i remember that i had a relationship and i don't want to sound that person was a how they usually call it like a 304 uh i know that's a very disrespectful way to say it but that person was a 304 like from from the beginning right and just like a good man, obviously. I'm not saying I'm like the perfect man ever or something like that, but I would consider myself a good guy. And so at that time, I thought like, man, I can actually change this person. But I didn't focus on loving the person for who she was at that time. And obviously, if I decided to go for that way, I would not end up with her and end up hurting two years later. You know, it's 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 crazy, but... I guess that's a modern way of loving people right now. Pair this with Bell Hook's observation that romance is often depicted as a project, women are the architects and the planners. Namely, women are socialized early on to be the givers of love, to sacrifice their agency in the hopes of this collaborative project. Men are generally taught that love is this reward, this immediate and sustained high that is received passively, that is guaranteed for them if they achieve certain patriarchal standards. Yeah, if you get money, you'll get love. Yeah, that's that's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> Any extra <laughs> effort it. afterwards is taken as a failure on the part of their partner. Suddenly, this love as teamwork idea seems kind of lopsided. For men, this possessiveness is deeply tied to their identity. To be a man is to be loved by a woman, and to be loved is to have some sort of power over them. Boundaries, then, can be misused as forms of policing and correcting the ways in which their partner is supposed to love them. To back up from gender roles in general, this possessiveness is deeply tied to our own self-image. We do not feel secure in ourselves, and so we attempt to own and dominate another in order to regain some security. This sort of narcissism does not respect yeah. the agency of others and is motivated by one's own desire and fear. So, basically, that, that, that's the thing. So, 
men when they have money and when they have like quote unquote or they are quote unquote successful i'm saying quote unquote because you know su success can mean different things to different people but let's let's call success uh having money right so i have money therefore i think that i can control this person that i'm with you know that's how men see relationship and and not only that like the reason why they will give their woman or treat their woman to a nice dinner or give them i don't know wash like expensive wash or expensive clothing or bag or whatever uh, they tend to misunderstand and actually think of them as a thing and not actually as a person i'm just giving you that uh, but you, you you know i'm giving you that but you better win it i don't know if that makes sense um so long as we depend on another for our psychological well-being, intellectually or emotionally, that dependence must inevitably create fear from which arises sorrow, writes Krishnamurti. And furthermore, any alteration of these dependencies we violently oppose, because we depend on them for psychological security. Nah, to love that's that's kind of deep, bro. That's kind of deep. Let's <laughs> see. I was looking for a word to, act, to actually like say it, but remember guys, nah, English is not my, my main language. So it's kind of hard to like actually elaborate a little bit uh, on what I want to say or be specific. But I, I guess you guys get, get the point. Detachment is above all else to get over oneself. In fact, Frum recognizes the overcoming of one's narcissism as the main condition for the achievement of love. In attempting to secure our own self-image through another, we create an image or fantasy of that other. That's we what I that's that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying on the beginning. We don't like the person for who they are. We like them for who they could be in the future. So they're through manipulation, much exactly what I was saying. and control. This is our attempt to possess. And we also imprison ourselves in our own narcissism. We cut ourselves off from being able to experience true love. To abandon the present in order to look for things in the future, in the future. is to throw away the substance. And That's what I was saying, bro. Like, you, like, just thinking in that way does not let you enjoy the actual journey. And I, I don't know if that makes sense. You can actually reach or get uh, that person to that point in the future. But we forget that in the moment they are still the person that they are. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, that's not going to change. And you got to get used to it. You have to love the person that, that way uh, in order to actually. And, and if you love the person for who they are in the beginning, even if they don't change in the future, you'll be happy because you just love them who they are. Right. Uh, that's pretty like. That's pretty like self-explanatory, but. It's so many people that don't get it. And oh, that's why you see so shadow, many right, relationships fail. What is true love? Firstly, love involves some level of objectivity. You need to see people for their own potentialities and your own potentialities, rather than the images you have of them. This in itself means abandoning one's self-prioritization. It involves humility. And this humility is informed by a significant faith that through recognizing, trusting, and nurturing you and your partner's potentialities, love will flourish. Yes, boundaries still exist in this state, but this comes about through education rather than manipulation. By yeah. telling them your boundaries, you hope that this will also teach you about them and their boundaries and needs, and they might not be compatible with yours. And here is the crucial and scary part about love without attachment. You must be vulnerable to the things you feared. That things might not last. That people die. That feelings yeah. change. All you can do is bro, have that's some... really sad, bro. Um, like, even, like, loving a person and then realizing, like, when you actually, like, fully love and commit to a person, like, commit to a relationship, and, like, you don't care about the future, you care about none of that, but you know that one day that person is not going to be there for whatever reason it might be. So you're, you're and, and that's 
that's something that I really don't like about relationships is it's like a gamble. Uh, whether you love that person and that person loves you back, you don't, you're not a hundred percent guaranteed that that relation is going to, that relationship is going to last. So to just basically, basically just setting yourself up for whatever comes up in the future. If that person wakes up one day and just, uh, you know, say, Hey, I don't, I don't love you anymore. Unless you've been in the relationship for like 20 years, bro. Like, you'll just feel empty, man. You'll just feel empty. Uh, but again, it's part of the journey. You don't know. And there is some, like on the other side, there is some beauty to it. Because if you actually made it uh, to the forever and ever, and when I mean forever and ever, it's just, you know, to the point where one of one of the persons died, it's just uh, beautiful. Like the reward, the excitement, the happiness that you get at the end of your life when you know that you actually got to spend your entire life with that person, it's, it's actually rewarding. Humility and faith that the learning process itself, which is reciprocal, will bring love to both. Notably, Krishnamurti argues that passion comes through learning rather than through desire or gratification. It is within this intense curiosity we have for the other where love emerges. And how could we truly know those who we supposedly love if we limit them for our own gratification? We must listen without judgment. We must love without attachment. True love is unconditional, writes Bell Hooks. Just like but that. To truly Bro. flourish. Just like the Bible says, uh, I can't remember exact verse on the Bible, but the Bible just obviously says love is unconditional. Uh, you have to, you have to be patient. You have to be loving. You have to be uh, careful uh, of, of your rewards or, and all of that is on the Bible. I can't even remember the verse. Obviously, I hope someone actually put it on, uh, put the verse in the comment section. But uh, it's just basically. Love is basically First, what, what the Bible an ongoing uh, commitment to constructive as, struggle you know, forever and change. And ever. Yeah, I think I said it right. <laughs> uh, if it's meant to be, let it be. Uh, yeah, so about meant to be, I would say that you actually like work on it. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you, yeah, it's meant to be, but you actually have to work for it. Uh, do not overstand. Don't be extra, but, you know, do what you got to do. And hopefully you'll, you'll be rewarded with some good relationships, I guess. <laughs> it's, just, it's just really complicated, bro. Love is complicated.